just isn't Christmas without an overly large, heavy, obnoxiously loud, bright LED electronic Christmas ornament. What's up everyone, my name is Sean Hodgins and welcome back to my channel. So continuing with the tradition of Christmas ornaments and electronics, uh, there was the Christmas cheer Christmas ornament television that played 90s Christmas commercials. We had the, the 3D printed 3D printer Christmas ornament. Then last year we had the reverse zoetrope. And this year I'm going to do a persistence of vision Christmas ornament. So I've talked about that in the past, but persistence of vision is when you have a light that is moving or spinning and your eye thinks it's continuous because there is a lingering amount of time that the light stays in your eye. So here's what I'm thinking. When looking at the ornament or whatever, while it's not moving, I want it to be like a hollow ring. And then we'll have the LEDs either on one side or on all the sides. And from there we'll have, I'm drawing this upside down, so flip it over. And there we'll have a base of some sort with the electronics in it. And here we're going to utilize what's called a slip ring, which will allow us to send power through the ring and data for the LEDs. And that will allow us to control the addressable LEDs we're going to be using that's going to be on here. This is the uh, slip ring we're going to be using. As you can see it's actually pretty smooth. It's got I think a couple of bearings in here and we're going to be doing two things that you shouldn't do to these and one is we're going to be spinning it much faster than it's rated for. So I think it's rated for 300 RPM. I'm going to try to double that and also I'm going to use this as the load mount. So I'm actually going to utilize the bearings in here and actually mount the LEDs directly to it and then power those from a motor. Generally you'd like to make your own supported shaft so that you know everything is tight and solid but this seems good enough for this application. We'll see how it goes. Another thing is I'm going to be using an off-the-shelf LED strip. Um, these are the APA 102 or the dot stars. The reason for that is because these have a much higher refresh rate than the WS2812s um, because they have a clock line, so you need two wires for them. But you need the high refresh rate because on a POV display, it means you need to update them at a refresh rate that is within a fraction of your frame rate. So if you have, in this case, a sphere that's spinning, say, 24 frames per second, we probably won't get that high, but these have to update several times faster than that 25 frames per second because you have a changing image as they rotate around. Okay, here's the uh, general idea for the design. I'm gonna try 3D printing these. And we've got a circuit board on the top. This is the ring that will hold the strip of LEDs. I'm probably just gonna do half. Inside here we'll have a magnet, which is going to trigger a Hall effect sensor. So it'll know basically how fast it's spinning because we're not gonna know. Okay, I just came across my first problem. I made this little uh, test board, which is just an um, ESP32 feather from Adafruit, motor driver, and a connection to the, the Hall Effect sensor. This Hall Effect sensor board is from another project, and I thought it would be easier to use it, but turns out not. And I found that when this is spinning with the motor, it's missing pulses, which is not good, and it means our image is not going to be right. We're not going to get the right RPM. I do have a solution to this. On these micro gear motors from Palulu, you can get ones that have an extended shaft at the back and you can connect a magnet on here. And I should have just done this originally because you can get the pulses from this and that's going to make the code easier because I'm doing this so quickly that I can actually, this is a 10 to 1 gear motor, 
I'll get six pulses from a single hall sensor. So that means I can get 60 divisions on an image, which is going to be plenty because we're only going to have 16 LEDs on the side. So it's going to be an image of 60 by 16 around a sphere. So that's going to make it easier. I'm just going to have to reprint this, make it five millimeters taller so that the circuit board fits in there with the new motor because it's going to be slightly higher. And we'll get the, uh, hopefully the circuit boards will be in soon. Perfect. These better work. Again, this is just an ESP32. We've got a MOSFET for the motor, which I'm actually not mounted to the board anymore, as I just mentioned. This is a cutout for the power connector. That'll be pretty cool. And then just stuff to program the ESP32 and a connector for the hall sensors. Nope, that's for the LEDs. That one's for the hall sensors. Yeah, let's get it populated. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm using a rubber O-ring to drive the center from the motor. Um, they're kind of rigid and a hydrometer, but it seems to work pretty well. It's pretty smooth. Even the wires ripping, whipping around. But because I don't have to use this magnet anymore and I want an excuse to use my lathe, I'm going to make these parts out of aluminum on the lathe. They seem to work okay 3D printed, but I think it'll be better if they're out of aluminum. A little bit more dialed in and I can get a tighter fit on this shaft because things are already a little bit loose because we're using the bearings inside of the slip ring. So let's go make those. Okay, it's all together. I've got the uh, aluminum parts on machine on there that look awesome. And after these wires are fed through, they have to be soldered on. So it's kind of a pain because now you're stuck. You can't really take it apart without desoldering those. And I've got this block. This is the testing setup because, because it's sort of out of balance right now. So this is just dampening on the bench. Well, check it out, I've got a solution. This is how it behaves when it's unbalanced. It's kind of hard to see the oscillations because of the refresh rate of the camera, but even the RPM is lower. So what I did was I took another strip, I weighed it, and I found out it was, I think, uh, 7.9 grams or something like that. This was an older 3D print of one of the rings. It still has the stickiness on it. And I cut it down so that it weighed exactly the same. We throw it on this side. It's absolutely night and day. Higher RPM, much smoother, everything working perfectly. Okay, so I've written some firmware for this, and let's just go through it. Uh, it's not super complicated. It's actually much simplified compared to what you would do on, say, something that has like an FPGA or something that's outputting a lot of information. 
This isn't very much information. This is only 60 pixels by 17 pixels. And it's not a very fast refresh rate. The effect looks really good on the device to your eyes. It's hard to see on the camera. As always, we're initializing the libraries and we're using the Adafruit.star library and initializing the uh, strip. And then we just have some variables here. So we have an image called image buffer image. It's actually just an array of 1020 pixels, which is 60 times 17. And then inside the array, are three values, the RGB values of that pixel. So we have a default one in here. So that will become the buffer, but right now it's just a default image of the swirls. And in this image.h file, we've got images that I've made in Photoshop and converted into an RGB matrix. So because we want to use an interrupt on the Hall effect sensor, which will make sure that it happens immediately when it detects the change in the magnetic pulse. Um, on the ESP32, we have to use this function, I'm not even sure what you call it, to make an interrupt routine. It's just setting this flag. We actually don't care about this for this program at the moment. When the flag is set to one, that means it's detected a pulse, which could be high or low uh, with the magnet, which is north or south polarity it will take the row of pixels and it's going to change the color of those pixels. That's what this function does. It will change the color, but it needs to change the color of the specific angle of the image. So if we have 60 pixels, so every six degrees, we're going to have a new part of the image load on the strip as it's spinning. So it's happening incredibly fast. So what's happening is we're going to load an image into the image buffer, one of these. So we're loading those images pixel by pixel through this for loop. And each time it's doing this and it, then it sends that to the display. It's very simple in that sense that it's just loading that. There's much more complicated ways to do things, but this works well. And then it's really easy to just like call these routines. So I've got to restart it. Uh, what you'll notice is that this is flickering and that's just because there's a refresh rate of the camera and then there's the refresh rate of this and they're out of sync. So when you see this with your eyes, it's actually perfect. You don't see any sort of flickering, but when you see in the camera, you'll see only part of the image. And this is going to show my logo, the SH logo, just so you know. And I'll also fill in some footage of kind of what your eye will see because I can actually manipulate the camera footage to do that. Alright, so now it's working. Let me show you how I actually make the images and how you can convert it into uh, an RGB matrix that the Arduino can read. Okay, let's start with something like this YouTube logo, because why not? So, the first thing we need to do is get the size of the image to the correct aspect ratio for this sphere. So the easiest thing to do that I find is try is to make the width four times bigger. Actually go eight and we're gonna make this a little bit taller. So we've got the logo in the middle. Okay, so we'll make a new layer and we'll duplicate this layer. And anywhere that's black is gonna be no LEDs on and that's kind of the best case scenario so that you're not blowing out the image. So if we get rid of, we get rid of the background. Now we just have the logo and we'll fill in the back layer black. We've got the logo, but now the resolution isn't correct. So I think we actually have to make this wider. So we'll make the height 17. We see it's by 68. That's too wide. So now we will bring the canvas size 
down to 60, which is just going to trim off a bit of the black on each side. So that's the correct aspect ratio. And now we're going to save that as a new JPEG. Now at this point, there's a Python script that I use. I actually use it on a Raspberry Pi because it's easy because I've always got one running, so I can just send the image over. What this does is it takes the image that you load into it, it knows the size is 60 by 17, and it converts it into that array. So once you run this, it'll create a text file, a header file, with that information in it that you can copy and paste into here and rename it whatever you'd like. And then you just run that in your program with whatever variable you chose to name it. So here's a couple that I made. Twitter logo looks horrible on the sphere. You also have to kind of adjust for the skewness, which I haven't figured out yet, but there's a, an upvote. Also, you notice these edges, because it's different than just what you see on your screen, you're going to get these, you're going to notice that these are much lighter than what you see here. Got the SH logo, Christmas tree that I haven't tried yet. This is cool. These are just strips this way, but when they're spinning on the sphere, they look like a cool ornament. Uh, this was an attempt at the earth, but this line's very, this, this line's very intrusive, so it's super bright when you see it, but it actually kind of works. It's kind of cool. I should get one without that line. And then, yes, the YouTube logo. Let's try these out. You notice the edge of the Reddit upvote, the one line, had like white LEDs on. And that's because even if they're on just a little bit and you don't see it on here, it's not exactly a direct relationship to how bright they'll be on this, which is obviously requires a lot of tuning. But now this is always the trickiest part because obviously this isn't small. I'm going to take it off this mount. I'm going to add the proper mount that I designed for it. We're gonna go hang it on the tree. All right, I'm super happy with how that turned out. So keep an eye on my Twitter because I'm going to keep working on the firmware. I might make a different one that actually connects to Twitter or Reddit or something. And then if you retweet my username or some hashtag, then it will light up on my tree at any time because it's battery not battery operated. So it's just constantly on, which is awesome. So if you go and follow me there, I'll probably release something. It probably won't get out in time for this video because I'm going to release it soon. Yeah, there's no time. And we'll see uh, what I come up with. Also, there's just one more thing. And as always, a special thanks to my patrons. Without their support, you know, these projects wouldn't be possible. So everyone, yeah, got it finished in time and 
As always, these files will be up on GitHub. You can download them, you can print your own, you can try and make it. It's kind of, eh, it's actually pretty well put together. You could probably do it. So everyone, you know the deal. Be good and happy holidays.